Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. This time we're going, we're diving. Uh, this time we are going to calculate circuits. Uh, up to now we know, now we know what alternating current is, that we have sinusoidal uh, things there, that we can use uh, the complex numbers for calculating this. And actually I already told you that all the laws and so on stay the same. However, I'm just using the complex pointers instead of a number. And today we want to see how this turns out with our laws and with different, different elements and so on. Well, let's start as we started with DC circuits, with the Kirchhoff's laws. Gustav Kirchhoff's laws, uh, Kirchhoff 1, This was the junction law, uh, junction rule, node rule. It was the sum of all currents going in is zero amps. This was the this was the rule. Yeah, and now I make the extension for alternating current. Wait. That's it. And maybe we could also write here plus J zero amps. Yeah. But this is not really even necessary because zero is zero. Yeah. And if there is no imaginary part, it's automatically zero. Yeah. You don't have to write this plus J zero. I'm writing here just, just to be, have it covered. Right. Junction rule for AC. So all Currents must sum up, and and the final the final pointer the sum of all pointers must be in the zero point huh? of our complex complex area. Kirchhoff one, right? Kirchhoff two. This was the loop loop rule. It was written as the sum of all voltages in a loop equals zero volts. And now, extension plus J zero volts. This is, <laughs> see, it's not that hard. Yeah? It's not that hard to extend. Everything we know about DC currents. DC circuits can be applied to sinusoidal alternating currents as well. You have just to. Now let's see what is happening with our Ohm's law. Yeah, let's let's have a look at a resistor. Yeah, resistor. So we have an R. At the resistor, we said there is Ohm's law. So it was U equals R times I. That's it. Okay. Again with the extension. But the, the thing is, a resistor, this is just a real number. I don't have to use it here. Yeah? I show you why. Yeah? So our resistance is uh, R E J zero degree. Okay, and this equals, and now we have to calculate here, u divided by i. Okay, so this is u, h, a, and the phase angle of u, and now i and a change the phase angle of the current. And if we calculate this, remember, yeah, we had here division, division of the, of the uh, absolute values, 
and then we have e and subtraction subtraction of the angles and this must be zero look this must be zero so actually what is written here is that our phi u minus phi i must be zero this means phi u must equal phi i so both both angles of both current and 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 voltage are pointing in the same direction have the same angle the same angle yeah pointing at the same direction so we call this in phase they are in phase they are swinging with the same in the same phase okay and now if we want to write this as complex number this resistance yeah then we have a set r equals and now we have the the real bar and plus j zero ohm this would be the the complex representation of a resistor yeah this thing here is the resistance and if a complex if it's a complex resistance then it's called not resistance it's called impedance impedance okay. resistance impedance uh, resistance is the real part of the impedance right so that's that's for a resistor let's see what a what a capacitor is is doing capacitor c we know our capacitor the, 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 it was actually originally it was q equals c time u uh, but then we realized okay this q is the transported uh, accumulated transported a charge there and we said okay so our i equals c and then we have the change rate of of the voltage uh, if this is the flow rate of the current of the charges then this is the change rate of the voltage okay and now extend to alternating current tacky tacky and now please remember rules of what we talked about when we said okay when we derive a complex number we have to multiply with j omega so actually this is exactly the same as c capacity multiplied by j omega multiplied by u i'm already done <laughs> i'm already done so this u yeah. Now I want to have it in this form. U equals something, multi something, something <laughs> multiplied by I yeah? to, to simulate Ohm's law somehow. Yeah? So let's write it down. U equals, and now we have this to the other side, 1 divided by J omega C multiplied by I. And now I do something, I just say this is exactly the same as minus j 1 omega c multiplied by i. I just tell you 1 divided by j is minus j. You want proof? <laughs> proof! Okay. 1 divided by j. And now I extend the denominator and the denominator with j. I'm allowed to do this, right? I can ever extend. 1 multiplied by j, j multiplied by j. We would shorten this, it would be again there. Huh? So j divided by j squared. And j squared, since j is the square root of minus 1, j squared is minus 1. So we have here j divided by minus 1 and this equals minus j. 
back ready yeah now you know look at that this looks like ohm's law huh this looks like ohm's law and if i can you would use uh, uh, impedance so a complex resistance our set c yeah we would have there is no real part yeah? and we say there's plus j and xc yeah? and this xc is the so-called uh, uh, reactance of a capacitor yeah and what is our xc xc equals minus one divided by omega c this is called reactance of a capacitor so for ac current the capacitor acts somehow like like a resistance but with no resistance but with reactance reactance is uh, the imaginary part of the impedance resistance was the real part of the impedance reactance is the imaginary part of the impedance and this imaginary part of the impedance in case of a capacitor it's minus one divided by omega c yeah? well, maybe should write this down so this is zero minus j divided one one divided by omega c or it's zero plus one divided by j omega c you can find both forms huh? sometimes this is better sometimes this is a little bit easier to handle that's it hmm? capacitor what is missing coil 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 l was the sign for the coil and we said our voltage at the coil i do neglect now i do not care about the resistance i only have a look at like the coil would be ideal so we only have l multiplied by di dt and now again the extension for ac done huh? and now extend the, the same trick like here so this equals l and then we have this j omega and now we already have the derivation yeah so this actually equals j omega l multiplied by i same form u is something multiplied by current yeah? voltage is something and so this is this here actually is xl this is omega l this is the reactance of a coil right so my impedance of the coil zl is zero plus j x l and this is zero plus j omega l so actually in an ac circuit everything a resistor a capacitor a coil is acting like a resistance but this resistance is not called resistance because a resistance would only be the real part so we call it impedance yeah? and every element has their own impedance which is a complex resistance yeah? which consists of the real part resistance and the imaginary part the reactance right and if the reactance is positive then it's called uh, inductive reactance yeah? because it's coming from a coil and if the reactance is negative it's called it's called capacitive reactance because it's coming from a capacitor Calculation of alternating current circuits. That's it. Yeah. So just just replace every element as resistor. Next time we have a look at our pointer diagrams of, of AC of AC circuits. We will do some examples what these things all implies. What does it mean this this reactance and what does it mean positive and negative? What is the what is the 
final result then. Yeah, we will have a look at this in next video. Next video pointing pointers in AC diagrams. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.